The following worship service is paid for by Main Street Living. For when our hope is based on our circumstances, our story usually begins with the words, it was a dark and stormy night. But that our hope may not only exist, but may abound. Our gracious God gives us another story. Another story that is written on the pages of Scripture for us. Another story that is written throughout the pages of the Bible for us. Our story of certain hope is written for us in the Torah, the Psalms, the Prophets, the Gospels, and the Epistles. Our story of certain hope is found in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And our story in Jesus could not be more certain. Verse 12 for us today says, and again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come. Even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. The worship service will begin after opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins, to those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the second Sunday in Advent is Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. 
Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all of my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. In that day the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is Romans chapter 15, verses 4 through 13. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again, it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come. Even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair, and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message is our epistle reading of Romans chapter 15. We focus on God's word through the Apostle Paul in three verses of today's text. Verse 4 says, Whatever was written for in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Verses 12 and 13 say, and again Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Now, this is God's word that blesses us today. It was a dark and stormy night. Do you happen to remember these words? In case you have forgotten, or maybe you are too young to remember, they are the words of Snoopy. Snoopy, the white and black beagle from the cartoon called Peanuts. Well, Snoopy had many pastimes, pastimes which included flying his airplane, collecting fine art, sleeping on the roof of his doghouse, and writing stories. Stories which were always rejected by the publisher. Snoopy's stories were always rejected by the publisher because they were neither original nor were they particularly creative. It was a dark and stormy night. That is how every one of his stories began. Even when Lucy and Linus tried to help Snoopy find another beginning, such as Once Upon a Time, Snoopy would write, Once Upon a Time, It was a dark and stormy night. After the very last Peanuts comic strip of February of 2000, Snoopy was still writing about a dark and stormy night. But maybe Snoopy continued to write that line precisely because it was not all that original. Or maybe he continued to write that line because it was so much in line with reality. Maybe he continued to write that line because it so accurately reflected the world in which we live. As we all know, life is full of dark and stormy nights. There are plenty of situations that offer us hopelessness and despair. A great irony is that as we get closer to celebrating Christmas, that being the birth of our Lord and Savior, the light of the world, the days keep getting shorter and darker. During this time of the year when we are to be filled with the peace of good tidings and silent nights, we are often filled with more and more more turmoil, hurt, and angst. And so as we gather for worship service, let's ponder this question. The question is, how would your story begin if you sat down to write it? Well, the Christians located at Rome probably had a few dark and stormy stories, too. After all, they were a small group living out their faith in an often hostile and not in a non-Christian environment. They struggled with tensions that arose between people of Jewish and Gentile backgrounds. They were threatened by a number of false teachers who tried to lure them away from the sure hope that they had in Christ. These first century Roman Christians were in constant danger of slipping into hopelessness and despair. But in response to their situation, Paul writes to them today. Through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul has a message for them. It's a message of hope. It's a story of hope. Certain hope grounded in what God in Christ Jesus had done for them. And what a story it was. What a true story to tell. In verse 8 for today, Paul lets the Jewish believers know that the Lord had acted on their behalf. Verse 8 says, For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs. You see, in Jesus, the promised Savior had come. Through his death and resurrection, he had established his reign among his people. Their lives were secure in him. And as today's reading says, the story is not only for the Jews, it is for the Gentiles too. The majority of the believers at Rome were Gentiles, so Paul highlights a number of scripture verses that explicitly say 
that salvation is for them in Christ too. As Paul writes in today's text, he gives examples that are a representation of the whole Old Testament. Verse 10 quotes the book of Deuteronomy, which represents the first five books of the Bible, otherwise known as the Torah. Verse 9 and 11 are quotes from the Psalms. And verse 12 for today is a quote from Isaiah, which represents the prophets. In other words, Paul is saying, God has written you a story of sure and certain hope. And it's written all over the Bible. Paul writes in verse 4 today, Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Well, the people of Paul's day were not the only ones who needed hope. We need hope today too. We need hope that lasts. We need hope that transcends. We need a hope that we can hold on to. We need a hope that gives us a context for life. We need hope that gives us a story. But oftentimes we allow our circumstances in life to write our stories, don't we? We allow our circumstances in life to write our stories because we place our hope in them. For example, when it comes to travel, we have conquered land by automobile, air by plane, and sea by cruise liner. When it comes to growing crops, we irrigate the fields, we use herbicides for weeds, we use pesticides for insects. When it comes to health, we go to the doctor for flu vaccinations and medicines to make us feel better. When it comes to our future, we go to school to learn and earn degrees. And when it comes to our financial security, we invest wisely and diversify our investments. But while all of these things are good, Sadly, we often place our hope in them rather than in the one who gives them to us. And then when the circumstances of life fall apart, so does our hope. And so hope wavers when the plane we are flying in lurches and we grip our seat in fear. Hope diminishes at the effects of hail and tornadoes and extreme temperatures. Hope falters when bacteria, viruses, or cancer cells, which normally cannot be seen, Make their presence known. Hope dissipates when jobs elude us and bills continue to mount. And hope becomes elusive when our financial security blanket disappears. For when our hope is based on our circumstances, our story usually begins with the words, it was a dark and stormy night. But that our hope may not only exist, but may abound. Our gracious God gives us another story. Another story that is written on the pages of Scripture for us. Another story that is written throughout the pages of the Bible for us. Our story of certain hope is written for us in the Torah, the Psalms, the Prophets, the Gospels, and the Epistles. Our story of certain hope is found in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And our story in Jesus could not be more certain. Verse 12 for us today says, and again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come. Even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. In a few weeks, we will once again celebrate the birth of Jesus. Jesus who comes to live a perfect life in our place. Jesus who comes to die on the cross for our failures. Jesus who comes to rise from the grave, defeating death and winning eternal life for us. By God's grace, through faith in Jesus, we have a sure and certain hope. And with this in mind, the words of Romans 5, verses 1 through 5 say, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. In other words, because of Jesus, our lives are filled with sure hope. And Jesus comes to us in this life, in the here and now, to give us hope. 
sure, confident hope because he comes to us through his word in the Bible. He comes to us through the waters of our baptism. And he comes to us in the Lord's Supper too. And as Jesus comes to us now, he is already renewing us and recreating us. And he does this as he loves us. He does this as he forgives us. He does this as he molds and shapes us. He does this as he makes us God's children who are forever his. He does this as he writes his story of hope on our hearts. And so let's take up the question once again. The question, how would your story begin if you sat down to write it? Actually, God's word answers the question. Instead of your story beginning with the words, it was a dark and stormy night, it begins with the words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Do you remember these words? If you don't remember or if you don't know, they are the words of John 3.16. And if you don't remember or if you don't know, they are the words to your story. They are the words to your story in Jesus that say, for God so loved you, that he gave his only son, that as you believe in him, you will not perish but have eternal life. For way before any of your dark and stormy nights came to be, God sent Jesus that you might live through faith in him. For in Jesus, you have a story of sure hope. You have a context of confident hope no matter what happens in life. Your story of hope doesn't mean that you will never experience a dark and stormy night, but it does mean that you will never experience a dark and stormy night alone. This is a story of sure hope that our God writes for us. And so, may his words of hope add to your story today. Words that say, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
Good morning. I'm Pastor Adam Moline, Associate Pastor here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska, where Main Street Living, Lincoln, is filmed. We want to thank you for watching our program this morning. We pray that it's been a blessing to you. In the same vein, if it has been a blessing to you, we ask you to help support our ministry. You can send donations to 3825 Wildbriar Avenue, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516. Make them addressed to Main Street Living, Lincoln. We thank you for watching this morning, and we pray God's continued blessings upon you through His Son, Jesus Christ, our, His crucified and risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, Lincoln, 3825 Wildbriar Lane, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516, or visit us online at MainStreetLiving.com. This has been a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the Nebraska District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod and its member churches.